Okay, in this tutorial, we are going to learn about layer masks. Um, and then later on in the tutorial, uh, in fact, actually, along the way, we will be doing some uh, adjustments and learning about some additional adjustments to images as well. Um, but mostly, we're going to focus on layer masks. And um, to understand layer masks and the power of them, um, you need to think about a couple of concepts, or the concept of destructive versus non-destructive edits. Um, we've been referring to that a little bit throughout the tutorials, but um, often when we are doing selections um, or we're applying uh, effects, um, at times during the last the, the previous tutorials, we've been applying those effects to the uh, actual image that we're working on. So what I mean by that is, uh, I have a picture, a baseball picture here, um, and this is an image um, that has been loaded into or opened into my uh, Photoshop workspace. Uh, let's say I wanted to erase a part of it. Well, I could take my eraser tool here and I could start erasing a part of the photo like I just did. Um, the issue with that, or what I just did, is known as a destructive edit. And what that means is I just destroyed all the pixels of this original picture here and um, pretty hard to get them back once they're gone. So that is a destructive edit. Um, often when you're working in Photoshop it's great to you want to kind of maintain the original image but you want to do uh, work to it and layer masks are a great feature that allow you to do that. The layer mask essentially puts a mask over the photo and then any edits you do um, are done on the mask as opposed to the underlying photograph. So I've got my original uh, photo here and um, I'm going to actually do uh, apply a layer mask to it um, before I do that, though, um, what I'm planning on doing is actually just emphasizing the player. And to do that, I'm going to make the rest of the photo all black and white, and then I'm going to use a layer mask to bring back through the color. And I'll uh, show you how all this works um, in just a moment. The first thing I need to do, though, is to make a duplicate layer. I've got the baseball layer here of this original photo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say layer, duplicate this layer and it's going to make a baseball copy layer. That's fine. I'm going to say OK. Now I have two layers, right? They are identical, but I have the baseball and the baseball copy layer. The reason why I wanted, why I wanted to do that is um, on the baseball copy layer, um, I actually want to make an adjustment to that and make it black and white. So I can do that under Image, Adjustments, and I can change the uh, image from uh, its current uh, color to black and white. So it, image adjustment black and white and you can see that uh, converts it to a default uh, black and white setting. I mean this looks pretty good but I would actually would like a little bit more contrast in it. So you can individually customize uh, each color setting um, but you can also if you look at these presets and drop down there's different filters you can apply. So if I wanted to make this a little bit darker maybe I could try the darker filter if I wanted to make it maximum black I could do that you just could kind of play with these filters a little bit and see what you like it's going to adjust each individual color um, along these slides but I'm just gonna make it a little darker and you can see it just darkened it up a little bit that's enough contrast I think that looks great I'm gonna go ahead and say okay so now that I have uh, the baseball copy in black and white if I turn this off for a minute you can see the color image baseball is below, um, I'm going to apply a layer mask. I do not want to destructively destroy any of the pixels in either of these images, and a layer mask is an outstanding feature um, that allows you to make edits and work on enhancing images without actually destroying the underlying pixels. So the layer mask feature, uh, the way I typically get to it is my little options at the bottom of the um, layers dialog. And if you look at the one that has a square with a little circle in it, that is a layer mask, add a layer mask. And we're going to add a layer mask to the baseball copy. So I'm just going to click on that. And what happened here, you can see you have the original image that's still preserved. And now you have this white sheet um, essentially over the layer is what it's saying. And that is, um, that is layer mask. So in order to uh, work with layer masks, um, you need to utilize the brush tool and you need to understand the importance of the foreground and the background colors within the brush tool. So if I'm working in the layer mask, you can see it's bracketed around here, and I switch to the brush tool, 
Um, you can see uh, I've got an eight point brush right now and if I kind of put this over here that's really small so I'm just going to bracket this up a little bit maybe about that big um, depending on what you're doing uh, the brush should be can be kind of hard or soft I tend to prefer for the work I'm doing here is a brush with a little bit of softness on it so I'm going to put that at maybe 75 percent and that's just going to feather the edges a little I'll explain why that's important in a minute um, so you have a brush you're working in the layer mask the brush tool is selected and the foreground colors and background colors are white and black that is important because Within layer masks, anything that you paint black is going to remove that portion, and anything you paint white is going to put it back. So let me show you an example here. I'm working in the uh, red shirt that's now black and white. Watch what happens when I click and drag with the black foreground color. You can see that what's happening is I'm removing the black and white image and allowing the color image to shine through. The other thing that you'll notice here is that the layer mask now has this black spot on it. Do you see that? It might be kind of small. Um, that is the portion that I removed. Um, and then the reason why I set my brush to uh, turn down the hardness a little bit is just to give it a little bit of feathering or softness around the edges. Not too much. You don't need too much, but um, I just think it's helpful. So um, now if let's say I go too far so um, let's say I'm brushing uh, I'm brushing here and I get out to this area right here and you can see now I just brought in some color accidentally um, the great thing about the layer mask is you've not if I was doing this with the eraser tool those pixels were destroyed um, and I can't get them back I guess I can step backwards but basically they're gone the layer mask it's no big deal all you do is switch the foreground color to white and white means you add back the pixel so whatever you do you can very simply or easily undo right so now I can I could literally brush back the black and white and it's just right there so you all the only thing you're really changing is the mask so that is uh, how layer masks work they're uh, pretty pretty cool and very common to to use and the big advantage of them is the idea that you can edit your work um, and not destruct the underlying images. So for this particular uh, baseball player, you can see I can kind of almost rather quickly brush in the image. Now if I was doing this, um, you know, with not for the purpose of a tutorial, but uh, kind of more professionally, I guess, um, I'd spend my time getting the edges very detailed and well done um, without kind of bleeding over. Um, but I'm just kind of doing this quickly to give you an example. Um, I'm just going to bracket down quickly here and get the shoe in. But all I'm doing is I've got the black brush or foreground color up right now. Um, you can see like I went a little too far there, so now I could just bracket down just to get a little bit of detail in and switch to white. And I can just pull it in here and here. I think I remember seeing a little blue right there. Yep, I did. Alright, so now if we zoom out, Command minus, you can see I've got the picture. Um, and I have the baseball player uh, shining through from, the, from this image, from the color image. Um, to highlight him, I also uh, took the adjusted the uh, second layer to black and white, and I made it a little bit darker for a little bit better contrast. But um, that's a pretty interesting effect. It's a pretty cool looking picture. You could certainly spend a little more time on it. But um, the important thing is to understand that layer masks um, create non-destructive edits, and it's a way to work on a photo or in layers of images and bring certain parts forward, etc. You can do a lot of really cool work with layer masks, you will, um, in future projects. Um, and this is just a quick introduction to that. Okay, in the second part of the layer mask tutorial, um, we are going to uh, just practice layer masks a little bit more and also uh, just discover some additional features of layer masks, some additional tips and tricks when you're working with them. Um, we're going to do that uh, by first have you download these pictures from the sandbox. Uh, the pictures is SP07 picture window, which is got in front of me. And then the other one is SP09 Ireland. This is a 
scenic picture of Ireland. And what we're going to do here is utilize male layer masks to essentially cut out the uh, woods that's um, in the windows of this kind of large uh, window area of a home. We're going to cut out all the woods through a layer mask because we don't want to destruct the original image. And then we are going to insert this Ireland uh, background. We're also, while we're doing that, we'll do some adjustments to lighting and uh, I will introduce a new feature. You can see that this particular uh, house has some repairs made to it. Um, these patches on the drywall. Um, we're actually going to use a feature called the clone stamp to erase those um, and essentially fix the house. So uh, to get started um, with the picture window file open, you can see it's a background layer. Um, I need to make that an editable layer. So I am going to go and double click on background and that's going to bring up a layer zero. I'm just going to call this windows just to keep track of my layers. It's a good idea to label your your layers because um, these can get very complex and long and it's great to just have that information. So um, for the picture windows, um, there's a couple of ways I could approach this. I could go ahead and just create a layer mask right away and I could use the brush tool. Maybe I'll just do that quick. So I just clicked on add layer mask. So now you can see it added the windows layer mask. And if I go to tools and brush tool and if I've got the black color, black foreground up, um, it's going to erase through. You can see um, the transparent background coming through here in the uh, upper window or right here you can see it. I'm just erasing it and I could kind of go up to the edge and do that, right? Um, if I went a little too far, um, I could go ahead and switch to the white background and add back that part of the window and everything's kind of working as expected there, correct? Um, since I uh, really just want to isolate the window part and the brushing detail to do, to do that would be a little bit um, tricky or challenging, um, you can also, with uh, layer masks, utilize the selection tool. So if I do a quick selection and let's say I just select this window here and I'm working in layer masks so I'm just going to zoom in for a second and show you. Now that I have this selected I could go and refine the edge a little bit and do that type of work. Um, I don't need to for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, just let you know that all those options of course are there. Um, I can, uh, the neat thing about having it selected is the layer mask, if I switch to the brush tool and now I've got the black foreground color up which means I'm going to remove pixels on the layer mask, um, it'll only work inside of what's selected. So that's pretty handy because I've, if I bracket this way up, I could literally just take a huge swath and it doesn't the accuracy doesn't matter because it's only going to work inside of the selection which is what I want. I only want the window isolated um, and I can do that and that's pretty cool. So that's really handy for when you're working in specific areas of the photo you have a layer mask up and you don't want to have to try and get the edge perfect. Go ahead and do a selection and refine the selection a little bit and then just go ahead and uh, you know apply, apply the layer mask however you want. Um, that is a nice little trick, um, but another way that you can do this, just to give you an idea, delete the layer mask. There we go. Um, Command D. So actually I just put the layer mask in the trash and I'm back to my original photo, right? Um, without a layer mask applied, I can go ahead and select each window, which I'm going to do. Um, don't have to be real precise with this, but I'm just I've got my quick selection tool I'm selecting the windows and They're mostly going to select well probably uh, some of them will cause a little bit of Issues because I can see some kind of bright lighting like that one didn't exactly work great But for the most part it's pretty good um, I'm just gonna leave this as it is but if I zoom in a little bit I just want to point out that my selection tool I could minus and try to get in this lighter wood frame here um, I'm not really actually that worried about it because I can fix that with the layer mask as well and I will um, but anyway so you can see I have uh, selected all the windows the things that I want to isolate one of the neat features about layer masks is it's smart enough if you were to create a layer mask to see what you have isolated and assume that you want that um, in your uh, in your layer mask. So 
if I were to do this now, since I've selected the windows, it would uh, actually just keep the windows, the, the picture windows, and everything else would be um, outside of the mask or, or not part of the mask. I actually want exactly the opposite of that, right? I want all of the everything, the frame windows, the walls, but I don't want what's inside the windows. So to do that, I, the easiest thing for me to do is select the windows. I can inverse my selection. So I do want to show you a new feature here that's handy. If you go to the select menu and say inverse, so that's select inverse, it now just flipped. So now everything is selected outside of the windows. It just flipped my selection. And that's cool because uh, what I can do now is go ahead and apply the layer mask and watch the magic happen. It's going to automatically remove everything inside the windows that's not part of my selection. So I'm going to add the layer mask down here and boom, it just did it. Now you can see it's sloppy. There's issues, right? Um, I, I can see that uh, the, the frame got put out here and there's some additional selection there. Uh, well, you're working in layered masks. You haven't destructed any of that, any of those pixels. So if I just bracket down a little bit and clean this up, and I'll do a command plus to zoom in a little. Um, switch to white, and I'm gonna add back in. Look at that, pretty cool, right? So I'm just adding back in the little bits of the frame that didn't, uh, that got selected uh, on accident. You can see there's extra stuff selected too. So what would I do there? Well, I just change to black and work with that. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I'm just gonna get the obvious stuff right now because once I put a background in here, it'll kind of be more visible. Um, so I'm going to bracket this down a little and I'm going to go back to white and I want to get like the frame in, right? That frame got knocked out. There it is. That's good. Command minus to look at the whole picture. And there you go. I just isolated, created a layer mask. Here it is. Um, I still have my original photograph right there. I didn't destruct any of the pixels, which is great and I've isolated and removed the background, the woods background. Now I'm going to go to, I'm going to take this Ireland picture and I'm going to bring it in. So I'll just go to File, Place, and I'm going to find the picture SP09 of Ireland and say place it. Um, it comes in, it's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to say Shift and grab a corner and just kind of get it to cover the, the windows. That looks pretty good. I'm going to check mark that and say good. And the last thing I need to do, you see it's over the windows. If I drag under, watch the magic happen. We have just trans went from a someplace in the woods to Ireland, just like that, which is pretty cool. Now I can still go and clean up. Like I see some roughness here. I think I'm seeing some of the woods kind of bleeding through here. All I got to do is go click on my layer mask, bring up that brush tool, and now I can do the same type of adding and minusing. All right, so the window uh, scenery has been changed. We've just transformed this home from being in the woods to being in Ireland. Um, and then the next thing I'd like to do a little bit is I feel like the picture actually for Ireland is a little bright uh, compared to the shading in the room. So I'm gonna click just on the Ireland picture and I don't wanna do like a curves adjustment layer um, to this entire selection. What I'd like to do is actually just make a slight adjustment. So I'm going to add an adjustment and you can see up here I happen to have mine up um, on next to styles. If it's not uh, visible on yours all you have to do is go to a window and choose adjustments. And there's all kinds of different adjustments you can make to uh, any photograph and changing colors and color ranges and channels etc. One that I'm interested in right now is just contrast. I'm just going to simply select the very first one brightness and contrast and I'm just going to turn the brightness down a little bit in the Ireland picture, I'm to minus 39. We'll go ahead and make that minus 40 um, and just say that's fine. So I just wanted to show you that there's just a place where you can adjust. Just We're just working on the Ireland uh, picture right there at that, at that moment. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to do, I promised to uh, show you how to get rid of these drywall patches. And to do that, um, I'm going to introduce you to a tool called the Clone Stamp. The Clone Stamp, if you look at the tool's palette, is right here and it looks like a stamp and it actually operates exactly like a stamp so um, this is a little big we're going to try and work on these patches here I'm going to go ahead and turn it down a little bit I'll, I can bracket down I can also adjust it with my um, uh, adjustment slide right here but I'm just going to bracket it down a little bit all right so I bracketed 
down the clone stamp a little bit I have it selected um, and the next thing I'm going to do I'm actually going to change my focus from the adjustment the layer mask I'm going to switch over to the actual photo and work in the photo here um, and the reason I want to do that is I want to actually fix these drywall patches and I want to do that permanently because I might use this photo again and I don't want the patches there anymore um, so I'm going to actually uh, edit right in right on the the main main layer now to do that the clone stamp what it essentially does is you can pick up um, any color or area of, of your image and then you can stamp it wherever you want to put it so um, essentially you can pick it up like ink and stamp it down and that stamps gonna go there um, to do that uh, you need to have the alt key so if I look at this patch right here and if I hold down the alt key and click it's gonna pick up whatever area I'm over so if I'm here right next to the patch and I hold down the alt key it changes the look of the um, cursor I click once and now it's picked it up now I can click here right over the patch and it's gone did you see that um, I can go next to this one again I hold the alt key click once and cover up this patch and it's magically gone um, you don't have to just click to pat, stamp it down once you can also click and drag a little bit if it's a larger area but you have to be really careful about getting the lighting correctly so you do have to be a little bit precise especially if you're doing something like this is pretty easy but if you're doing something like a subject where you're trying to remove blemishes and stuff you have to be very careful otherwise um, it can look well pretty funny um, so I'm gonna pick up this one and click and I'm just gonna swipe a little bit and you can see see how you can kind of see it in there it's like it's not perfect um, the swishing wasn't really awesome so I'm gonna go and say maybe here and just cover that up a little bit I don't know if that's any better but there it is you can also see a subtle one here so for this one actually I'm gonna pick up this where the light shade is right there and then on this side I'm gonna pick up there and just kinda go like that now um, I would probably want to turn down my tool a little bit there because that was not great and maybe I'll pick up the light again here and just kind of feather it back in there we go that looks a little better okay so um, I'm not gonna bore you with going through and patching up all these holes but that's what you do what one by one you know alt and then stamp it out and alt and stamp it out uh, in this tutorial uh, we learned how to apply layer masks we learned how to work with layer masks um, um, and other tools like the selection tool uh, we learned how to inverse the selection and then create the gener create the layer mask. Um, we learned how to refine it. And then finally, we learned a little bit about the clone stamp and how to um, repair or uh, pick up one part of a photo and transfer it to another. Thanks for watching.